One of my favorite questions that people ask and have asked, oh, and by the way, you know one in life when people say, you know, a lot of people ask me, they never ask people that. You know, a lot of people ask me, how do you stay so young? Nobody asked me that. You know, a lot of people ask, how do you stay in such great shape? Nobody asked me. But people do ask this. Why doesn't anybody go to prison for lying? Whatever happened to perjury? You know, you see testimony, you see cabinet members, you see folks testify, and you know they're lying. I mean, flat out lying. Is there, is there something I'm missing? This is what people ask. It's a damn good question. Well, let's look at it this way. One of the best statutes available... And it's the reason why so many people take the Fifth Amendment when speaking to the FBI, federal officials. Uh, it's, it's what got um, Martha Stewart uh, in trouble. Not insider trading, but lying to a federal officer. It's 18 U.S.C., 18 United States Code, 1001. Statements or entries generally. Now listen to this except as otherwise provided in this section. They always say that. And by the way, it's never, there's nothing provided elsewhere. Uh, whoever, in any matter within the jurisdiction of the executive, legislative, or judicial branch, whoever in any matter, knowingly and willfully, doesn't mention anything about being under oath or subject to oath or pain of perjury or having been advised of their rights or with their hand on the Bible, which I've never seen, by the way. But whoever... One, falsifies, conceals, or covers up by any trick, scheme, or device a material fact. Remember that word material? Remember that? So whoever falsifies whatever, a material fact. Two, makes any materially false, there's that word again, fictitious or fraudulent statement or representation. Makes any materially false. And three, makes or uses any false writing or document knowing the same to contain any materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement or entry. Material, material. What's that word? Material, girl? Does that mean something? Oh, yeah. So, can I make a lie? Can I make a lie? Can I lie about something that's just not important? How are you feeling today? Great. When you're not feeling great? Did, is that falsifying, concealing, or covering up a material fact? Is that making a materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement or representation? Materially false? One's a material fact, and the other one is materially false. And another one is, whoever makes any false statement or document knowing the same to contain any materially false again. Again, there's that word. What does this mean? So can I lie about stuff that's not material? And what's material? What does this mean? That's why people take the fifth. And when you remember the, the term taking the fifth means invoking your constitutional right. Anybody ever make a big deal about taking the first? Why did you say that? I took the first, took the First Amendment. I uttered an expression. Let's go through a couple of things here, okay? First, a couple of rules of evidence. This is good. This is, let me see, 401, Federal Rules of Evidence. This is rule number 401, the test for relevant evidence. Relevancy, Evidence is relevant if it has any tendency to move or make a fact less or more probable than it would be without the evidence. <laughs> okay. All right. Does that make any sense? The fact is of consequence in determining the action. What does this mean? What does this even mean? The, these rules, and I love evidence, by the way. Here's my favorite. 403. Federal Rules of Evidence. This is my favorite one. Excluding relevant evidence for prejudice. The court may exclude relevant evidence if its probative value is substantially outweighed by a danger of one or more of the following. Unfair prejudice. 
Well, that's the whole reason you want evidence. Uh, confusing the issues and uh, misleading the jury, undue delay, wasting time, or needlessly presenting cumulative evidence. Here's a one, unfair prejudice, confusing the issues, misleading the jury. Okay, what, what does all this mean? Stop. You started off with lying, and now we're talking about 403 and whatever. Let's start off with a couple of rules here. What's relevant? We'll get to the lying part in a moment. But what's relevancy is my favorite. Relevance is a, a relevant evidence. Is something that has the tendency in logic to prove or disprove a material issue in fact. What was that again? There's that word material again. You're, you're slipping that material thing in. What, is that, what does that word mean? Does that mean something special? Oh, yeah. If the issue involved is weight, somebody's weight, I don't know why there's a case involving weight. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe weight. And I were to introduce a scale or medical records that show your weight. Is that relevant? Yeah, because that has the tendency and logic to prove or disprove a material issue, namely weight. But what's that material thing again? What's a material issue? It has a bearing on the case. Oh. So, subsumed under relevance is materiality. Exactly. So before we even worry about relevant, does it have any bearing on the case? Yes. Interesting. So, you can introduce relevant evidence, or evidence is relevant, only if it's Germain to the case, yes. That's why Mark Furman, in my humble opinion, and I told him this personally, I don't believe committed perjury because perjury has to deal with lying or misleading regarding a material issue. And at the time, the issue was O.J. Simpson's guilt, not whether he used the N-word, Mr. Furman, in the course of writing a book or whatever. So he lied when he said, F. Lee Bailey said, did you ever use the N-word? Nope. Never. Never. Is that lying? Well, maybe under federal law. We'll get to that later. But usually, you lied about something that was collateral. Something about like, yes, I used to go by the name Stallion when I was a young man. Did you? No. Is that a lie? Yes. Is it germane? Is it material? No. Is it perjury? No. It's a collateral matter. Collateral, something else. And Mark Furman told me he just wanted to get the case over with or what have you. So let's go back to this. If the FBI asks you a question, and I'm not giving any advice, but a lot of people have thought it wise to take the Fifth Amendment because of this 18 U.S.C. 1001, because if you were to be involved in providing something which is uh, false or concealing or covering up by any trick or scheme uh, or device, a material fact, whether under oath or not, you could be guilty of this. So when you see somebody who is on, and this is interesting, when you see somebody who testifies in Congress before, let's say, uh, federal, you know, Ted Cruz or whoever, and you see all these excoriating uh, cross-examinations and the like. And if you were to believe that somebody who was testifying before Ted Cruz was lying, and if you go a step further is of, of, of presuming that, that, that it's material, that he's lying about something that's material, namely he's, he's lying if, if this is what you believe, if this is what you can prove, about something that he's being asked. Is that or is that not perjury? You better believe that's perjury. So why isn't perjury ever pursued? In 2005, a number of, of uh, Major League Baseball players appeared before, he says, my favorite, appeared before uh, the House or the Congress or the Senate or whatever it was. You talk about uh, performance enhancement drugs and steroids. And the best, the best line ever was Mark McGuire who said, do we have to talk about this now? That, that was in the past. Do we? Well, by definition, all testimony has to deal with things that were in the past. You're not brought in to testify under oath as to what's occurring right now, because I can see what's happening now. And as far as what's testifying in the future, well, 
time travel being what it is, I don't think you're equipped to do that. But nothing ever happened. I don't remember any, any perjury. 1994, seven, I believe, tobacco executives said, do we think that nicotine is in, connected with addiction? No. Any perjury from that? Nope. But one thing I want to lead you, leave you with, which is important, this is kind of, kind of cool, as they say. This 403 evidence, 94, well, we used to call it 90 because it was Florida, but anyway, but it's 403, it's based on the Florida, uh, the federal statutes, 403. The court may exclude relevant evidence if its probative value, the, the, the ability to prove, is substantially outweighed by a danger of one or more of the following, unfair prejudice, Confusing the issues, misleading the jury, undue delay, wasting time, or needlessly presenting cumulative evidence, but unfair prejudice. This is how this used to be used. In every prosecution for murder, you have to prove, you have to prove that the person, the person that you are claiming is dead, who was murdered, you know, Joe Smith, dead, that the defendant, Eddie Davis, killed Joe Smith. You gotta prove Joe Smith is dead. Makes sense to you, doesn't it? Doesn't me. So how do we do that? Well, you can introduce dental records, the old dental records. The the dentist comes in and says, Yep. That's, that's those teeth, all right. Or maybe somebody, maybe fingerprints, that's good. But usually it's at some point somebody who's a relative or somebody knows what he looks like. And a lot of times this is done beforehand, stipulated to, you don't want this in, in court. But imagine the following. Imagine if I were to, oh God forbid, use the Constitution. Imagine this were the, a picture of the deceased. The most gruesome picture you've ever seen in your life. I mean horrible. And I've got, and I am a prosecutor. I have to prove that this guy's dead. So who do I have on the stand? His mother. She's never seen this before. And if I say Mrs. Uh, Davis or Smith, whatever the guy's name is, um, I'm going to show you something that's been marked for State's Exhibit Number One for identification. Do you recognize this? That. Ah! Objection. Sustain. Ah! Take her out. My baby. Ah! That jury's going to sit there and say, you know what? We weren't too sure about the uh, case before, but now we are. And if that lady thinks he killed him, and if you think he killed him, that's good enough for us. Because that SOB who made this poor, you got it. We used to have uh, one judge who would, he would say, let me see the dead pictures. Nope, nope, clean that one up. You got a, you got, you got a cleaner one than that? Sometimes people would bring these terrible pictures in and hand it to somebody. So that would be a 403 evidence exception. That would be, it's relevant, but a little unfair. You know what I mean? For something just identification of the deceased, for you to make the mother cry like that, that's, that's the classic. So the question is, as I brought it before, does anybody ever get hit with perjury? Oh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, but for the most part, no. And let me leave you with this. If we had a separate court just for perjury prosecutions, just for perjury. Citizens, civilians, uh, cops, administrative officials, you name it. Just just perjury, lying as to material issues of fact. We'd be going 24 hours a day because the question is sometimes not so much whether you lied, but what was your intention? Is it mistaken? Is it sort of mistaken? Is it oops? Is it I didn't know? I spoke too soon? It's kind of tough. And like I said, you're going to have to stop. And what if it's your witness? If you're the prosecution, 
you're going to charge a person that you use to convict somebody else? You're going to charge your person with uh, with with perjury? It's just like what's going on right now with with uh, President Trump and Alvin Bragg and Michael Cohen. Well, why is it Michael Cohen charged with perjury? Because he's the witness. He's the main witness. That's why. Have I confused you? Good. Because it's not that it's confusing. It's just you never knew so many rules were put to things that you always thought were just obvious. All right, my friends. Put your thoughts and comments below. I'd love to hear from them. Hear you from you, rather. And um, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. And whatever you do, please, I beg, implore, beseech, and importune you to comment as you see fit.